Hello students, welcome to Kenny's EduCare, a group of Kenny Solutions. This is part 7 of lesson number 4, Structure of the Atom. Now if you remember, in part 6, we discussed about valency and we even discussed on what exactly you can say atomic mass and mass number is, right? So, that is also a very important part of the lesson that like you should be knowing about. You can even get uh, multiple questions on that. But now, we are only left with isotopes, isobars. Then we have like summary discussion. And lastly, we will be having those 19 questions to discuss at the end of the lesson, right? So, once we are done with it, that is how we will be completing with the whole lesson structure of the atom okay but before i proceed further i want each one of you to please revise whatever notes that you have taken in your book because for me you you doing revision is very important so everyone please go through it once I hope everyone is revising whatever notes you have taken starting from part 1. As you know, part 1 was the introductory part to the lesson structure of the atom. So there, I have made you aware about the Dalton's atomic model, the Ford's model, Bohr's model, even the Thomson's model, right? So every one of you should be clear with that now. Okay, so after that, like we have started this lesson by discussing more about atoms and all, right? 
so i want each one of you to please go through this slide so here we have like two three questions which have been given and like you need to know the answers for them for each and every question that has been asked after this we discussed on charged particle in matter so here we have atoms which are of three different types okay and they include like electrons protons and neutrons so these are the three types of subatomic particles okay and always know the charges which they belong to now electrons they always have negative charge protons have positive charge and neutrons have no charge so neutrons are going to be neutral okay so the mass of an electron is uh, like 1 by 2000 times the mass of hydrogen atom right so over here the mass of proton is equal to mass of hydrogen atom and we can consider that to be as one unit okay and when it comes to mass of neutron so mass of neutron is equal to mass of hydrogen atom and again we can consider that to be as one unit now i'm repeating some of the parts in every session that we are doing right the reason behind that because they are important points they are the basic things that i'm repeating because i want you all to be clear with it anyhow okay so please go through it and whenever you write a note on charged particles in matter you should be like drawing this as well so after this charged particles in matter we discussed on this activity because if you remember in the first slide itself we had the last point that one of the first indication that atoms are not indivisible it comes from studying static electricity and the condition under which electricity is conducted by different substances right so the first indication that all the chemists got that atoms are not divisible it was all because of static electricity which was being studied so because of which we have this activity and we even performed this to check the nature of charged particle right so what we did in this activity is we rubbed the comb on our hair and then we tried to attract it after rubbing it we try to attract that to small pieces of paper and you will see that static elect because of static electricity the small pieces of paper will get attracted towards the comb same goes with the glass okay so what we need to do over here is rub a glass rod with a silk cloth and bring the rod near an inflated balloon and then we need to observe what happens so we know what will happen static electricity will get generated over here as well right
so please go through this everyone Then we discussed more about this activity over here and here we have important information on E. Goldstein, who exactly he was, what, this, what he had discovered, what are candle rays and there are so many details which have been mentioned on the screen. So I want you all to please go through this. I hope everyone is going through this slide properly. After this, we discussed on the structure of atom, where we studied like the discovery of the two important fundamental particles, that is electrons and protons, right? So, and we even studied that J.J. Thompson, he became the first person to discover electron, right? So, I just want you all to please go through this slide.
After this, we discussed on Thomson's model of an atom, and we know that Thomson's model of an atom is also known as plum pudding model, right? So everyone like this is also very important. You can be asked to write a note on it as well. So please go through it properly. So I hope everyone is going through it and remember one thing, whenever you're writing about Thomson's model of an atom, now it's a model, right? So you need to draw that model and show how exactly it has been arranged. So as you can see, this figure 4.1, the model has been shown where the positive sphere and the electrons which have been like, you can say, the electrons revolving in that positive sphere has been shown. So you please go through that everyone. Now, all the models which have been given is very important, okay? Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. So here we have information on JJ Thompson uh, which has been given. So please go through it once. Then we discussed on like what exactly Thompson proposed. So he said that an atom consists of positively charged sphere and the electrons they keep on and like they have been embedded in it like a cookie. Okay, as you can see that has been shown. 
and the second thing that he said that the negative and the positive charges they are equal in magnitude so the atom as whole is going to be electrically neutral okay so though thomson's model like explained this that the atoms are electrically neutral the results when it was like tried and tested by different chemists or by other scientists it was not explained by this model so that is the reason that thomson's model is not being used okay so you should be knowing this two things it's very important again about all the four models you should have a brief idea because you can get you can say you can get to write an answer for four to five marks as well okay After this, we discussed on Rutherford's model of an atom. So here you can see how Ernest Rutherford was like how he conducted the experiment using gold foil and other thing that he used was alpha rays, right? So the reason for the same has been given over here. And I want each one of you to please go through this. You should be knowing all the reasons why alpha particles were used, why gold foil was used and everything. Okay. After this, we discussed on the results that Rutherford got. So all the results that were like that Rutherford got was unexpected because some of the rays, like some of the alpha particles, they got deflected by the foil by small angles. Okay, then most of the fast moving alpha particle, they passed straight through the gold foil. And another result that he got was very much unexpected for him that only one out of every 12,000 particles they appeared to rebound. So in the words of Rutherford, this result was almost as incredible as if you fire a 15-inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it comes back, come back and hits you. So these are the unexpected results which was observed by Rutherford. So whenever you're writing an answer on it, make sure you're drawing that scattering of alpha particle. You're showing how the particles are getting scattered and even writing the results which will be explanatory as well.
after this we discussed on like who exactly rutherford was so he is known as father of nuclear physics you should be knowing this so i want you all to please go through it and then we will study about the next one After this, we discussed on the drawbacks of the fourth model of an atom. So, I want each one of you to please go through at once. I hope everyone is going through the drawback. After this drawbacks of Rutherford's model of an atom, we discussed on Bohr's model of atom. So here we have like some of the postulates given by Bohr about the model because Bohr was working on the drawbacks of Rutherford itself. Okay, so whatever drawback Rutherford's model ha had, it was corrected by Bohr and today the model that we use is of Bohr's model itself. Okay, so I want you all to please go through it. Once properly, you should be knowing it.
After this, we discussed on like who exactly Neil Bohr was and which are the books in which like uh, you can find him. Okay. After this, we discussed on about the energy levels, which we also call it as shells, or we can even call it as like orbits. Okay, so I just want you all to go through it. Then we discussed about neutrons, so you should be knowing who discovered neutrons. So neutrons was discovered by Chadwick, okay, and he said that neutrons have no charge and it has a mass which is equal to that of protons and he eventually named it as neutrons, okay. After this, we discussed on like how are electrons distributed in different orbits. So I want you all to please go through it. I hope you all have understood this like how exactly uh, do we distribute the electrons and different shells. So we have four different shells K shell, L shell, M shell and N shell right and depending on that using the formula 2N square okay where we need to change the number of N. So 2N square and then we calculate how many electrons can be occupied 
in the you can say in the specific shell right so please go through it everyone So this is how the electrons are like arranged and this is how like you should be knowing about the valency as well. Okay, because the number of electrons which has been present in the outermost shell of an atom, we know that as the valency of the atom, right? So now you have already studied what is valency, so make sure you're knowing it. After this, we discussed on what is valency. So I just want each one of you to please go through it. I hope everyone is going through this slide and you all have uh, understood what exactly we have studied so far about valency. After this, we discussed on like more about valency and how exactly do we calculate it, right?
I hope everyone is going through this slide. Today, like mostly, we will be discussing on isotopes and isobars. Summary discussion and exercise. Let's see if we can continue that in the next part or like today itself. Okay. So after this, with this is the most important table that we have, and I want each one of you to please go through it. Okay, after that we discussed on atomic number, so I just want you all to please go through it as well. then we discussed on like after discussing about atomic number we discussed on what is mass number so i want everyone of you to please go through it properly See, you should be knowing how, like, how do we represent the atomic number, mass number, and everything. Okay.
after this now we need to discuss on isotopes what exactly isotopes are so see in nature a number of atoms of some elements have been identified which has same atomic number but different mass number so the one who has same atomic number like let's consider any atom or any element who have same atomic number but the mass number is different for example take the case of hydrogen atom now hydrogen atom has three atomic species how many it has three atomic species and namely it can be protium deuterium or tritium these are the three atomic species that hydrogen atom have what it is protium deuterium and tritium so these are the three atomic species of hydrogen atom that we have so this becomes the isotopes okay so see the atomic number of each one is one can you see one divided by one one divided by one three divided by one and how do we write it a atomic like atomic number that is represented by z is written on the top of the element symbol and the atomic mass is written below right sorry so you can find out over here that the atomic number of the hydrogen atom in each case with respect to all the three atomic species is 1 but the mass number is changing atomic number is remaining constant the mass number is changing as 1 2 and 3 respectively right so this is one of the example other such examples are carbon so we have carbon 12 by 16 and 14 by 6 carbon then we have chlorine where we have 35 upon 17 okay so here for carbon it is carbon 12 by 16 and 14 by 16 one is missing so don't don't get misunderstood over there okay the one uh, one in 16 is missing then for chlorine we have 35 upon 17 and 37 upon 17 these are the other example other two examples of chlorine so on the basis of this examples we can say or we can define isotopes as atom of same element having the same atomic number but different mass number so what it is atom of the same element like for hydrogen we had protium deuterium and tritium right so the they are the atoms of the same element but they have same atomic number okay they have same atomic number but the mass number is different got it so the atomic number is going to be same but the mass number is going to be different so this is the difference that exists uh, this is what we know it as isotopes okay so i just want you all to write that and even uh, you can say write the examples and define isotopes just take that much in your book
I hope everyone is writing about isotopes and the examples of it as well. After this, after isotopes, we have the next thing like we are still left with because as I said, we have cal calculation for it. So see, many elements consist of mixture of isotopes and each isotope of an element is a pure substance. Though it has like hydrogen and three different species, protium, deuterium and tritium. But each isotope of an element is going to be a pure substance again. Okay. So the chemical properties of isotopes, they are similar, but their physical properties are different. Now you should be knowing this, that the physical property of the isotope is going to be different, but the chemical properties will remain the same. So as we studied, just a second, as we studied for chlorine, 35 and 37, right? So chlorine occurs in nature in two isotopic form that with masses 35U and 37U. So they occur in the ratio of 3 is to 1. So obviously the question arises over here is now which mass of chlorine should we take? 35 or 37? So we are going to find out the average atomic mass and that is how we can like come up with this calculation. 35 into 75 by 100 plus 37 into 25 by 100. Now why 25? Because it is present in the ratio 3 is to 1. So 100 ka, when you divide 100 by 3, sorry, 100 ka 3 percent is 75, right? And 1 is 25. So it is uh, like calculated that's how. Okay, so that is why we have that 75 and 25 given over there so 35 into 75 by 100 because it is present in the ratio 3 is to 1 so 3 is 75 by 100 and 1 is 25 by 100 so this is how you will calculate and you will get the answer as 105 upon 4 plus 37 upon 4 and at the end you will get the answer as 35.5 u so the mass of an atom of any neutral element we can take it as average mass of all the naturally occurring atom of that element. What are we going to take? We are going to take the average mass of all naturally, naturally occurring atom of the element. So suppose if an element has no isotope. So in that case, the mass of its atom will become same as the sum of protons and neutrons in it. What it will become? it will become same as the sum of protons and neutrons in it. But what if an element occurs in isotopic form? What will happen? What if an isotope, an element occur in isotopic form? So, then we have to know the percentage of each isotopic form and then calculate the average mass. Okay, so that is how the average mass has been calculated. So this does not mean that any one atom of chlorine has fractional mass of 35.5 U. It means that we can take a certain amount of chlorine and that can have both isotopes of chlorine and the average mass we are going to consider it as 35.5 U based on the calculation that we did. Okay.
so i hope you all understood i just want you to write the calculation part do the calculation part and check like how exactly it works and then like because the ratio was 3 is to 1 and that is how we have calculated the further thing okay i hope everyone is writing it now we are left with application part so please go through it now after this we are just left with the application part so see since the chemical properties of all isotopes of an element are same now we just studied that chemical properties of isotopes are going to be the same but the physical properties will differ right so normally we we are not concerned about taking a mixture okay because the chemical properties are going to be the same anyhow but some isotopes have special properties which find them useful in various fields like an isotope of uranium we can use it as a fuel in nuclear reactor then isotope of cobalt can be used in treatment of cancer and isotope of iodine can be used in treatment of goiter now application of isotopes are very important you should be knowing like where exactly we are using this isotopes and do they have any special use or not okay so i want you all to please go through this uh, application part take a note of it and then i'll stop for the day because like in next class we we, we won't have much thing and i cannot elaborate now so we'll do that in the next part i hope everyone is writing the application just write that they are used uh, isotope of uranium used in nuclear reactor of cobalt used in treatment of cancer and isotope of iodine is used in treatment of goiter that's it
okay so i hope everyone has written the application as well now about isobars i'm not going to continue today we'll discuss about isobars in detail in the next part when uh, like after isobars we will be even discussing on the summary discussion what all things we have studied in the lesson structure of an atom and after that we have few exercise questions to discuss so i'm going to show you the questions one by one and I want each one of you to please go through all the questions properly so that you are ready to answer them in the next class. Okay? I hope everyone is going through the slide. So all together like this we have like 19 questions I guess that we will be discussing. Now these questions are very like straightforward to define atomic number, mass number, isotopes, isobars and all. Right and this is also very easy. Like all the questions are very straightforward. It's, it's just that if your concepts are clear you will be able to explain them very properly. Okay.
so here you need to calculate the valency and all so we'll do that i'll tell you how exactly you need to do it So this is the last question that we will be discussing and this is how like we will be ending up with the lesson structure of the atom. Now whatever part has been left I am going to continue that in the next class. Thank you everyone.